all growth depends upon activity. There's no development, physically or intellectually, without effort. And effort means work. Calvin Coolidge, former American politician and lawyer. Our government realizes this need for physical and intellectual development and is continuously working to make our island home a much better place. Hi, I'm Theodore Henry and welcome to today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. We'll be sharing with you the Ministry of Education's plans for the intellectual development of the nation. With many developments happening across Jamaica, we'll only be giving you just a small taste of some of these. You don't want to miss any of it, so stay with us. Let's get a little breeze on this land. All right. Now let's get some bounce in the rhythm. All right. <laughs> let's get some fire on our hearts. Now that is what we call all right. Run, come, get some. Jamaica. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, August 21. A draft National Spatial Plan, NSP, is to be completed by December. Minister without portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Daryl Baz, made the announcement Tuesday. He was addressing the opening of the NSP Technical Symposium and launch of Phase 2 of the NSP's development. The draft spatial plan will guide national development and decision-making through the optimal planning, use and management of the island's resources. Phase two of the three-part project will focus on updating the 1978 National Physical Plan, which has been in existence for over 30 years. Attention will also be placed on the development of a National Spatial Planning Information Technology platform. The NSPIT platform will be accessible to the general public and aims ult to ultimately provide all the spatial planning database and information to support online application and processing of development applications. All the ministries, agencies and departments involved in the development processes will therefore benefit from a state-of-the-art and dynamic IT-supported spatial plan. The 1.33 million US dollar World Bank funded program is being implemented as part of JAMPRO's National Competitiveness Project. It's part of the larger five-year $19.8 million U.S. dollar adaptation program and financing mechanism for the pilot program for climate resilience. Farmers in a compound St. Elizabeth are currently planting cannabis for medicinal use. The move follows the recent signing of a tripartite agreement under the Alternative Development Project to transition traditional cannabis farmers from an illicit framework into the regulated environment. The Akampong Town Maroons Timeless Herbal Care and the Cannabis Licensing Authority are working to determine the best practices within the regulated environment for cultivation and processing of cannabis for medicinal use. The project aims to promote sustainable development and poverty eradication. It is also intended to ensure that the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2015 is enforced while protecting the human rights of all citizens, including traditional ganja farmers. Still on farming, 4,000 producers are now diversifying their crops with the introduction of MD2 pineapple suckers. 70,000 suckers were provided through the Rural Agricultural Development Authority's Production Incentive Program. Farmers from St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, St. James, Hanover, Trelawney and St. Anne are benefiting from the $280 million initiative. They received the pineapple suckers recently. This is a revolving program to which each farmer will be required to give two suckers per plant back to RADA for redistribution to other selected farmers. In other news, 24 tertiary students can now pursue a variety of degree programs with scholarships and grants valued at $17 million. The funds were handed over Tuesday under the Governor General's 7th Summer of Service program. The truth is, we have some brilliant students who need financial assistance to further their education. This program, the Summer of Service, provides some assistance to help them 
to become the best version of themselves. The Summer of Service program is part of the Governor General's I Believe initiative, which was launched in 2011. So far, 73 students have benefited from the program. Persons registered on the Program of Advancement through Health and Education path are being encouraged to utilize its post-secondary grants to assist with back-to-school expenses. PATH beneficiaries who are moving on to further studies may apply for the grant within two years of leaving secondary school. Grants valued at $15,000 to $30,000 are available for use to resit CSEC and CAPE subjects or to pursue certificates, diplomas, or associate degrees. Application for this grant closes October 31, 2019. Beneficiaries must be registered at an approved post-secondary institution such as the Heart Trust NTA, high school sixth form, or a community college. Meanwhile, persons moving on to tertiary education and enrolling in the first year of a degree program are eligible to apply for a tertiary grant through their respective institutions. The grants are valued at $100,000. And finally, the Transport Authority has expanded the number of companies that are able to install tracking devices on public passenger vehicles, PPV. Minister of Transport and Mining Robert Montague says PPV owners are now able to get tracking devices through any company they choose. The owner will be required to provide proof of installation and an activity report from their tracking system for the last 30 days on request by the Transport Authority. The Transport Authority is also reminding the public that the installation of tracking devices is mandatory for new applicants of PPV licenses and will soon become mandatory for all PPV operators. The use of tracking devices on public passenger vehicles falls under the Minister of Transport and Mining's 16-point transformation reform proposal. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Did you know that in a recent survey done by the OCA in schools across Jamaica, 43% of the students received inappropriate messages from strangers? The OCA wants you to be smart online. Never speak to persons you don't know. Parents, encourage your children to be social, but be smart. This message was brought to you by the Office of the Children's Advocate, with support from UNICEF. It was Nelson Mandela that said, no country can really develop unless its citizens are educated. This is, of course, a key area of interest for our government, cemented in plans for that sector unfolding this financial year. Knowing that we must do the best with what we have, where we are, the ministry has developed a number of strategies tailored to bring about improvements we have so far purchased $817 million worth of textbooks, which will be distributed starting in August. The ministry has prepared a plan of action in dealing with the shift system. We are making provisions for breakfast to 70,000 of our most vulnerable students at the primary and early childhood level this year. For the upcoming school year, students in grades 1 to 13 will benefit from $817 million worth of textbooks, electronic aids and other supplies. The inventory taken of books that were stored in storerooms across the country have been identified and reallocated so that it reduces the demand 
for books that we have had to buy. Plans are also in place to feed 70,000 vulnerable students under government's breakfast feeding program. The Minister with Oversight says Nutrition Products Limited has put forward a plan to meet the demand. The Westmoreland plant, as I mentioned here short, uh, a short while ago, will be reopened and they will be preparing fruit juices and, and package the distribution of local foods for distribution throughout the area. And this just this venture alone, this, this decision will save some 200 jobs. Government is also expanding the program and plans to serve meals earlier in the day. And we're also making efforts to ensure that the, the food that they are given each day start at 9 o'clock as early as possible rather than to wait until almost midday when they're already very hungry and not able to absorb learning. 37 schools are still operating under a shift system, but the Education Ministry wants to end all that by the year 2024. Already started this year are the following schools that have been are being attended to. The Cedric Titus High, the Exchange All Age School, Mushet High, Albert Town High, Old Harbor High, and Friendship Primary. While some schools are being expanded, the ministry is also dedicating resources to repair damaged and worn furniture. Repairs to furniture, pilot program initiatives last year for the repair of damaged and worn furniture, saw the selection of two schools from each parish that have a work room and metal work department. These 28 schools are known as repair schools, repairer schools. Each school is paired with a number of neighboring schools which have furnishing to be repaired and is given just over $1.5 million per year to complete the repairs. This has saved us some $9 million by doing it this way. And it is expected that this will continue. More special education teachers will also be recruited by government this year to meet the growing needs of students with special needs. $1.2 billion was also allocated to the special education unit, which makes special provisions for students with various physical and learning impairments. The special education unit operates a braille and large print program which reproduces print material for persons who are blind or visually impaired which is an enormously important program. Large print services are also available for students who have deficiencies in vision in regular schools. Government has also opened two diagnostic centers which assist in diagnosing students with special needs and providing short-term intervention. Also on the agenda for the Education Ministry is offering support to students who underperformed in the first sitting of the Primary Exit Profile PEP. Upon entering high school, the students on pathway 2 and 3, which is the areas of greatest concern to us, are assigned to pathway coaches in literacy, mathematics, depending on what the assessment reveals. The coaches will require and provide the adequate support in the targeted areas to help students live up to their true God-given potential. Approximately 34% of the students who sat PEP were proficient or highly proficient in all subjects, while close to 50% showed limited or no evidence of the required competence. Minister Samuda also mentioned that by September, there will be close to 100 math coaches across all regions and 20 literacy specialists to further improve the students' academic performance. We are confident that PEP is in a much better position now to assess and get an indication of the student's ability and its reporting structure has given us more and it has given us more detailed information which we will be using to create the intervention strategies necessary to assist. plastic bags were introduced to supermarkets in 1977. The production of plastic bags are toxic to the environment 
as the process involves the use of petroleum, natural gas, and other chemicals. 160,000 plastic bags are used globally every second, and 5 trillion are produced yearly. Side by side, they can encircle the world seven times. Plastic degrades after 700 years and will only fully degrade in 1,000. This means that all the plastic that has ever been produced has not degraded. It remains toxic even after it breaks down. 13 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year, and at least 800 species worldwide are affected by marine debris, of which 80% is plastic and is mistaken for food by turtles, fish, and other marine life. Research has shown that fish caught for human consumption contain plastic nanoparticles. An average family will use 60 plastic bags on four visits to the supermarket, and only 1 to 3% are recycled worldwide. Play your part in advancing your welfare and that of the earth. Support the ban on plastic, reduce, reuse, recycle, and get eco-friendly bags for you and your 1877. Further developments continue in our transport sector with a special police branch charged to manage traffic on our roadways. We now bring you our talk with the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEP. High visibility clothing, new neon bikes, and a continued commitment to serve, save, and secure. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF's fairly new police division is designed to maintain safety on our roadways. It's the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEP. As of August 29, 700 members have been deployed across the corporate area and St. Catherine to allow for greater traffic management and safer public spaces. But what exactly is PSTEP? PSTEP is a merger between the, the Motor Rights Patrol Division and the Traffic Division. And what has caused that is because of the rampant um, disregard for the usage of the road. Apart from that, we realize that we need strength of personnel on the roadways to deter some of the things that are happening. And what of the branch's roles and responsibilities? Our mandate is really to cover as much intersections and corridors as possible to, to ensure that the offenders, regular offenders, desist from doing the regular things that they used to do. Every corner you turn in the half of tree area, in Walton Park, down by East Avenue, where we have the one way, we have presence there to ensure that the rules of the road is maintained. When you come out of Portmore, for example, or people come from the country, and they come into um, Marcus Garvey, and they diverge in East Avenue, once it's East Avenue, there's somebody there directing traffic, pulling traffic out, so that it doesn't back up back onto Marcus Garvey and the police is always there for guidance. They don't know where to go from there, we are there to show you. And with their bright neon yellow uniforms and similarly colored bikes, the P-STEP members are hard to miss. The division has also been attracting attention and commendations for its sustained presence on the roadways and its role in restoring public safety, reducing crime and disorder, and improving public trust in the police. But well, the truth is that we have been getting a lot of complaints. On a daily basis, you'll see taxi men. You'll see them lined up in lines coming down. We have people honking horn to show their appreciation. People are able to tell us by Twitter or other social media how much they appreciate us. They're able to go home and time their family, etc. And all it takes is for us to just be present. As the JCF continues its work, the public is being asked for full cooperation. I just want to say to the public that Peace step is new, but policing is not new. And uh, we are here to maintain the peace. Just want to work with us and to ensure that we have a free flow of traffic in the corporate area. Peace step is just one example of the JCF working to serve, protect, and reassure with courtesy, integrity, and respect for the rights of all. The EU has been doing a lot of work in Jamaica. The EU provided some 23 billion Jamaican dollars to help people living in sugar-dependent areas. This means new houses for sugar estate workers, rehabilitated roads, improved schools, health centers, vocational training, 
business grants, and a wide range of action to improve the lives of people in sugar-dependent areas. Life sweet of a true with the EU. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's another special area of focus aimed at helping youth in some of the most vulnerable communities to get a second chance at life itself. It addresses the area of human development, which can reap the results of intellectual development and even economic growth. Take a look at the CSJP's Men with a Message. The Citizen Security and Justice Program, CSJP, is a crime and violence prevention initiative. It was developed by the Ministry of National Security to enhance security and justice by addressing the social and economic factors that help foster crime. In 2010, the program launched an outreach initiative called CSJP's Men with a Message. It is a group of messengers who are reformed men whose stories are aimed to inspire other young men. Well, I've been a member from the inception of the group from 2010. Uh, my role is giving tips and caution to at-risk males, and you know, just to show people that um, change is possible. CSJP come and put me on the platform for a better life. My role in the program I encourage my fellow member that we have a, a task and a journey. My role is also to empower the young youth. Them. They were recruited using different um, criteria. There had to have been proof that they had been out of crime and violence for at least two years. They also had to get recommendations from the police, from the community members, and from especially like the community development committees. We must firstly understand that it's a journey. And if they were coming from the other extreme, you know that naturally a lot of workshops, a lot of personal development activities would have taken place along that journey. So they've been able to adjust their behavior. They've been able to reflect within themselves and say, if there are other youngsters who are looking up to me, the onus is on me to act in a particular way. My name is Derek Jones. I'm a member of Men With A Message. I was in Central Lockup for around a month. I was a part of the problem, robbing people, pop and corner, different ends and turf to end up, go out and fall on the wrong side. When I first wake up in jail, I can't believe that I'm in jail I wake. So from there, my mindset start thinking different, knowing that jail was not the right place for me at that time. I'm Kitsi Brian, and I'm a man with a message. Being in institutions and seeing what life is like, you know, you just have to make a decision. Is it that you're going to continue like this, or you're going to make a means of the life? I decided that coming back, in this, coming back into um, civilization that I wanted a change. We definitely see where the Men With A Message initiative, I mean the CSJP on a whole, but also in particular the Men With A Message initiative has been having significant impacts on the youngsters across this island. One such evidence is it being the demand that is there for the, the program, for the young men to come and speak at the different schools. And not only have they been asked to come and speak, but there have been many calls for them to return. I remember a particular place, it was somewhere over in St. Andrew, but there was a young man there who, who said that he, he knew me before all of this and, you know, when, when I gave a message and I finished and the young man came, you know, he was, uh, um, he was crying, tears running down his face and it, he was asking me that if I don't remember him, but honestly I didn't know him, but he said that he knew me bef from time before and that um, he had loved the transformation. I can see if he said that young man is a member of the National Institute, Engineering Institute, which is NTI. So to see that I was the person that inspired that, wow, that's, that's great. 
they are representing a brand that is synonymous to peace building, a brand that is synonymous with law and order, right? So the men with a message are always expected to be good ambassadors of the program, of the CSJP and of the Ministry of National Security, which is our parent ministry. Don't follow a friend or not. We don't have no way of going. Badness is madness. Stay in school. Gavi, teach with that. Anywhere we go, read something before we reach. Even if we sit down and waiting on the people, we need to read something. Read a book and you will see the difference between you and the man when I read. Favored, preferred, prepared mind. We have the power you know, to form and shape our future. And I'd like to think that, you know, if you want good for yourself, then you'd want to choose a positive way to. Other people are doing what they want to do. So if I have a dream, I don't see um, the reason why I can't go there and achieve it, just like any other human being. So development in a country is not only about improving education or economic growth, it's simply but largely a way of improving the quality of life for everyone. Here are some more details on just how this government is working to improve the living conditions of ordinary Jamaicans. Number one, development of our roadways. Government has created the road infrastructure legacy projects that fall under its major infrastructure development program, MIDP. Through this initiative, we're seeing several major roadways being rehabilitated. Number two, development through the plastic ban. As of January this year, the government imposed the ban on the importation, manufacture, and distribution of single-use plastic bags, straws, and polystyrene. This initiative will help in areas such as climate change, pollution, and the safety of sea animals. Number three, and our last point, development in economic investment. Government gave ordinary Jamaicans the opportunity to purchase shares in Wigton Wind Farm Limited. 11 billion shares at 50 cents each were offered under the IPO. While those are some pretty impressive examples, they are just pieces of a much larger puzzle coming together to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and as you can see, to do your business. Today's magazine has come to an end, but if you missed anything, you can watch it all again on our website or our YouTube channel. You can also keep up with the JIS team on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry. You take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.